There is something to be said for being silent in the presence of Almighty and just saying, speak, your servant listens, your servant hears. And so that's really the emphasis this week. And I should say that on Tuesday night, uh, typically Larry heads up the men's prayer and um, Adoina heads up the women's prayer. But this week only, on Tuesday, uh, we're uh, dismissing both of those in order to bring everybody together. And uh, that'll be Tuesday at 6 p.m. This Tuesday and then the following Tuesday. Um, so there, it's all it's it's a little bit confusing unless you just keep in mind there's prayer every morning at 10 and prayer every night at 6 through Wednesday, and uh, except for Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Okay, is that as confusing as mud? <laughs> I, I do want to um, talk to you for the next couple of weeks about prayer, and it leads us into an emphasis of revival. Um, we're having revival services here with Clarence and Pat Dalrymple, uh, Friday night, January 20th, 7 p.m., Saturday morning, there's a gathering for the ladies, all the ladies of the church, 10 a.m. on January 21st, and then uh, again, 7 p.m., Saturday night, uh, and then on Sunday morning, 10 a.m., January 22nd. And this is what I felt in my heart as, as we are heading towards this. And I think that sometimes we can think of revival as the event. Um, I get a little nervous about saying we're having revival because I know what I mean when, when I say we're having revival. And I don't think you can just schedule revival and say we're having, we're having revival on this day and this day. But I do think that prayer is incredibly crucial to what God will do in our hearts. Yeah. And I do believe that you, you cannot tame a genuine move of God any more than, than you could um, a hurricane but, but, or a tidal wave. But, but when the wave comes, you ride it as long as you can enjoy it. But this is what I felt for 2017. This prayer emphasis that we're having these two weeks and the revival meetings that we're having at the end of that following week, those are not the event. The whole thing, the whole thing is preparatory for the incredibly important things that God wants to do in our church uh, and in our city in 2017. And um, January 29th, I'm going to kick off a new series that I'm calling All Systems Are Go. I hope you will not miss one part of that important teaching series because it, it, I'm going to lay some things out for you. My heart, my vision, my hopes, and my dreams, and uh, what leadership is thinking and where we're going and, and uh, praying for God to guide us and direct us. So, the two weeks is called Pray the Way. Today is Listening Prayer. And we're going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 3, the first 10 verses, words that you may be familiar with or words that possibly you've never read before in your life. But I pray that today you will hear them and they will speak to you. 1 Samuel 3, verse number 1, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli. And said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Kind of comes off like, Don't bother me. I've had a long day. I'm tired. <laughs> so he went and lay down. Verse 6 Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. 
And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli, the, the priest who was supposed to have known this the first time, but then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. This scripture is rich with beautiful symbolism. We could go down a lot of different rabbit trails talking about this text. You've got the priest who is old and his eyes are failing him. That's a spiritual picture of the condition of Israel. You have the lamp that has not quite gone out. It's a picture of things were cold. There were not a lot of visions. There were no revelations. But there was still an ember burning. There was still a hope. And then, then you have Samuel himself. His name, Shemuel, speaks of the hearing aspect that is part of his name. He would hear from God. This was the first time he heard from God, but he would hear from God many, many, many times over the course of his ministry career, and he became revered as one of the great prophets in the history of Israel, Samuel. It started with him saying, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I'm going to share with you just uh, three points and speak briefly of them. Uh, each of them has to do with listening prayer. A, a listening kind of prayer. And here's the first point this morning. Wait for it. No, that is the point. Wait for it. <laughs> You're waiting for it. No, that is it. Wait for it. Waiting is such a critical aspect of our walk with God. Have you noticed this about God? We serve a crockpot God, but we are a microwave people. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that true? We want instantaneous, but the Lord wants to do it right. We're okay with TV dinners because I want it right now. But God wants succulent and savory. And He says very often, wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will walk and not be weary. They will run and not faint. Wait for it. Uh, I'm going to show you just this hilarious little clip. I'll set it up. This is, this is Carson the Golden Retriever. He set a new world record. He was able to hold 50 snack treats stacked on his nose. And the whole time his face is intense, looking as if to say to his master, Now? Now? <laughs> Now? Now? But the master just says, stay. And finally, he says, get it. Boom. Oh, I mean, it's chaos. You, you'll enjoy this little clip. You might have to turn the video uh, volume up a little bit on it. <laughs> Can you believe that? Oh boy. What discipline. 50 
snacks stacked up on his nose, and, and finally he gets to get it. I, I think we could learn a lot from old Carson. You know, I want what I want right now. God, I've been faithful. I deserve it. I need this. And I'm asking for this. And the Lord has His reasons. And sometimes He just says, Stay. Wait. Be patient. Trust me. Does God ever talk to you that way? He, does. he talks to me that way. Here's the second point this morning. How many of you like when someone looks at you and just says, shh? How many of you don't like that, do we? Um, this, this little video, this is my favorite TV commercial, and I think it drives home a point. This is the, it's called the Kit Kat Library Break. Go ahead and roll that. The Kit Kat Library Break. I think this is hilarious. Library Break! I, I like Kit Kats. They're not my favorite. I, you know what? I've got to tell you, um, a while back, uh, I, Darren, I need to get even with Darren somehow, but that guy, um, here, I was up here just bearing my soul with the church family one day, talking about how I have this real struggle with, Dorit with nacho cheese Doritos. That, um, that I was in my kitchen one day and I realized that I, I was gorging on nacho. I was, I was what's the word? I was, um, yeah, I, just, I, I was out of control. I put the bag down and just said, ah, get away from me. I try not to keep them in the house because, I mean, I could eat a family size by myself. I could, I just loved them. And so that's a, a propensity for weakness for me. And, and when uh, the last two trips I've gone on, uh, when I come back, and open my office door, and there's a huge bag of nacho cheese Doritos sitting on my desk. And um, with it had a little note that said, "Bet you can't eat just one." <laughs> he was right. But I think sometimes God wants to say to us, "Shh, just be quiet." We can get so frantic worried about things and trying to figure it out and, and praying things and saying things and speaking things and declaring things. And all of that has a place. But sometimes, sometimes we need to just be quiet before Him. And I think the watchword is what Samuel said, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Here's the third point this morning. Set aside time to listen on purpose. Set aside time to listen on purpose. Um, a year, a year, uh, several years ago, I had training in what's called um, <coughs> life coach. And life coaching, uh, one of the principles of it is to, to use active listening. And so active listening means that you're fully engaged in hearing what that person is telling you. Your eye contact is undivided. You, you repeat back to them phrases to let, you, let them know that you have heard them. And, and you... You are not just a passive listener. Have you ever talked to someone and they're like on their phone? Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> right? Have you ever talked to Pastor Keith and he's been that way? I mean, let's be honest. We all, yeah, it's possible. But I'm, I'm learning that if you can give someone the gift of hearing them, actually listening to them, you have just given them one of the best gifts that could ever be received. The gift of listening. So many times in ministry, 
I have the opportunity for people to tell me their story and then and then just as I'm celebrating it with them and hearing what God has done in their life, I can see that glimmer of hope in their eyes. There's something about being heard. You were actually listening to me. That means a lot to people. So set aside time to listen on purpose. Um, when I do pre-marriage counseling with couples, I always use Love Talk. Love Talk uh, was started by Dr. Gary Smalley. Uh, L-U-V, he can't spell, but he can come up with great ideas. <laughs> Love Talk is listen, understand, validate. Love Talk. And so, um, McDonald's does a great job of of using Love Talk. You drive through the drive through and I would like a quarter pounder with cheese and a large order of fries and a Diet Coke. Okay, sir, I, I have a quarter pounder and fries and a Coke. Is that correct? No, 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 you, you forgot the cheese and that was supposed to be a Diet Coke. Oh, I understand. Quarter pounder with cheese, fries, and Diet Coke. It, does that complete your order? Yes, it does. That will be $57.91. You know? <laughs> Drive up to the first window. But the, what have they done? They have listened, and they understood what you said, and then they validated it. And so um, <laughs> pre-marriage counseling is sometimes fun because I, I will have her describe to him uh, her dream vacation. And he's got to listen and understand and validate. And always, it's like, he'll, he'll go, you want to go where? And spend how much money? And then I'll have him describe his favorite meal. She's going to cook him any meal he wants. And, and he's describing it. And, and he's, he's saying, no, 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 you, you left the gravy off. That's an important part of the meal. And that was sweet tea, by the way. It's not regular. Tea. We want sweet tea to listen and understand and to validate. Incredibly important. Um, it, to do it on purpose. You may have seen this in the Wall Street Journal this last week. There was an, an ad, uh, an, an article that said Americans eat 554 million jack-in-the-box tacos a year. And no one knows why. <laughs> I had an experience one time. We were in a jack-in-the-box, and um, it, it was really, it got kind of radical. Um, a lady had gone through the drive through and she ordered tacos, and then she came in, and it was apparent instantly that this lady is drunk. She was drunk, and I mean, she was angry. I ordered tacos and these are the greasiest tacos I've ever seen in my life. And all of us kind of went, it's Jack in the Box. <laughs> I mean, what do you, they're 99 cents. That's what, you get two of them for 99 cents. Everybody knows that. 554 million a year and nobody knows why. But every once in a while, I get a craving for a Jack in the Box taco. Just a mindless meandering, just no purpose, no, just, I want a taco. And, uh, but let's not be like that in our approach to God. Let's be purposeful. Do things intentionally. Like, don't just listen when you're, you know, you're driving down the road and you're at the red light and you don't like the song on the radio. Oh, hey, that would be a good time to listen. Turn the radio off, listen for a few seconds. God, you got anything to say? <laughs> I mean, I'm not knocking that because sometimes God speaks at red lights and He does in powerful ways. But how beautiful would it be for your 2017 if you were able to factor into the equation times where you intentionally, you just didn't do anything except say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And He will speak. Here's the takeaway of this message this morning. Lord, what I hear you saying is, and I'm not going to fill in that blank. Some of you are taking notes and 
It's driving you crazy because you want that blank filled in. I, I got to fill in all my blanks. But that's your blank. And, and I would like to ask you to take this with you throughout this next week. And at some point during these two weeks of prayer, define, Lord, what I hear you saying is. And then, and then fill in the blank. Um, Dallas Willard is an amazing writer. A, a wonderful, deep thinking Christian brother. Uh, he wrote a book called Hearing God. And, um, and in it, he talks about a technique that he uses personally for listening to God, for hearing God. I, I've remembered this. This has stuck with me for better part of a decade. <clears throat> Dallas Willard said, I, my practice is when I've got a decision to make, I will pray and say, God, I've got a question about so and so. And I really need to hear from you. I, I could see going this way, or maybe I could go this way, but I just, I really need to know where you are in the mix. And Father, just please guide me and direct me because this is an important decision and I don't want to make the wrong decision. And so he will pray that, Lord, what do you have to say about this matter? And then he says, there's something about us humans we need to disconnect from that moment and go, he says, I recommend go after your prayer time. Um, leave, leave the blank not filled in. Just wait. But just go and do something you enjoy. If you've got a really important decision to make, maybe you go fishing. Or do you enjoy doing landscape or mowing the yard? Going for a walk or whatever it is you do. And just the agreement is, Lord, if you have something to say about this, I would appreciate you speaking into my life. And he said, it will be amazing to you the numbers of times that God will speak to you just as you're going through your normal everyday occurrences. Someone will say something to you in a conversation that you never even thought they knew anything about and they don't even know your situation, but they speak right to your situation. Or uh, you'll hear a talk show radio broadcast and, and it will give you something that you never thought of. Or, or maybe you'll be at a prayer gathering and someone will speak a word. I just, I feel like maybe someone needs to hear this and they have a prophetic utterance or a word of knowledge. He says, do that. Do it often. And so I started practicing that and I've been amazed, absolutely amazed, how if I say to the Lord, Lord, I need your direction, and I'm going to be listening, the tuner is up, the frequency and the radio antenna, it's all in place, and I'm just going to try to be sensitive. Would you speak to me? How many times he speaks? That he actually, he's actually, he doesn't want to hide information from us. He actually does want to speak expressly to each of our situations. And I believe that if we can wait for it, if we can if we can set aside time to listen on purpose, then we say, Lord, what I hear you saying is. I think he'll use love talk with us. I think he has so many ways that he'll understand it, he'll validate it, and he'll tell us, yes, you've heard me. He also has ways of saying, uh, no, that's not what I was thinking at all. I, I want to close the message this morning with something that is so anti-Pentecostal. Oh, come on, Pastor, we don't do that. That's not us. For the next three minutes, I want you to pray, but I don't want you to use words. And I don't want you to pray out loud. I want you just in your heart to just say, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord. And I want to tell you something. If you haven't done this in a while, three minutes will seem like an eternity. You're going to think, oh my goodness, 
180 seconds of silence. I don't know if I can do this. Your spirit needs this so much. At the end of that time, then Darren is going to play just a super soft, just worship music. And at that point, as the music starts to come up, the service is, is dismissed. If you want, you're welcome to come and find a place to pray. You're welcome to do that. If you want to just hang out in fellowship, you're welcome to do that. But I request that, that you would do that outside the doors. That if people want to be in here praying, that they could just stay and wait and, and seek and search in a prayerful environment. So, here's a gift God gives you. Three minutes of silence. It might be the only three minutes of silence for you this week. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Ready? Go. Go. 